Does anyone else think the people in horror movies are just downright stupid? Like really, if I'm being chased by a mass murderer, I'm not going to some small closed off room. No, I'm heading to a large room with multiple exit points. So no matter which door they decide to bust down with a machete, I have another good one right there. And windows, they always forget about windows. I may not be able to break through the wall, but I can break the window. Now, I know you all agree with my carefully thought out plan and would personally like to see me put to the test so you don't have to listen to the rest of my speech. But the scary thing is, you have no choice. Welcome to Heading Away from Murderers by Bailey Raymond. Today, we'll be going over three basic steps. First, we'll look at the background of the location. We'll see how fear is cultivated and controlled in your brain. Next, we'll look at the killer slash specter in front of you today. This includes the societal expectations that cause fear in every life. And finally, we'll plan our escape route. Courage comes at a cost. It's much too expensive for most people, especially those horror movie characters, <laughs> the little ones. When planning your trip to Springwood, Ohio, make sure not to stay on Elm Street or else you might be plagued by murderous nightmares. However, if you tell anyone of such nightmares that plague you with fear every single night, you'll be called mental. <laughs> now, I know we talked about horror movies and nightmares as a great way to incite fear, but it can also be things such as steep stairs, honors geometry tests, or even speech tournaments. Whatever your fear may be, your brain recognizes it based on past memories. The hippocampus and prefrontal cortex will perceive the threat based on past experiences. Then the amygdala will send out a signal to the motor functions that are responsible for carrying out the fight or flight response, which includes increasing the blood pressure and breathing rate, giving your bloodstream a healthy dose of adrenaline, and pumping blood to all of your muscles. Well, each of the following factors, context, distraction, social and social learning, influence the way we experience fear. A common, a common theme is a sense of control, says assistant psychologist at Wayne State University, Linda Saab. Your brain will directly target the threat at large. I should probably mention that your response to watching a horror movie is a lot different to your response to, of living in one. Your prefrontal cortex and hippocampus will um, stop the full-fledged response from happening, so it makes it a lot less fun scaring people. <laughs> now, we know that our brain has a pre-programmed response for how to deal with fear. The question is, are we born with fears as well as those that we learn? It has been discovered that all living creatures are born with two innate fears that developed through evolution. A 1960 study by psychologists Eleanor Gibson and Richard Walk at Cornell University set up a visual clip to test this. Small animals and children were beckoned to cross a glass platform, and many would not. This proves that once death perception has been developed, so does a fear of falling. Seth Norholm, a translational neuroscientist at Emory University, explained how humans and animals both have an acoustic startle response when a loud noise occurs. This means that you'll duck when you hear a balloon pop or a really loud scream. I would demonstrate, but I have to preserve your ears for the rest of my speech. After seeing how our brains process and where some of our fears come from, we are going to look at how fear is used to control in everyday life. Have you ever seen the movie Saw? No, not Seesaw. The movie Saw, with the guy in the creepy white pig mask, I want to play a game, <laughs> Well, just as Saw manipulated his subjects into doing things such as cutting off their own feet, we have constantly been manipulated by fear throughout our, <laughs> throughout our lives in a very less gruesome way. As a child, fear was used to train you into submission because bribery doesn't always work. You ever get yelled at as a kid for writing on the walls or a piece of antique furniture that you inherited? Was that just me? Well, all those experiences made you who you are today. Through your childhood, you were taught by your own mistakes and through the mistakes of others in stories. The true grim fairy tales are much more gruesome than some horror movies. 
The boy who cried wolf taught you that the consequence of lying could be getting eaten by a wolf. Hansel and Gretel taught you that disrespecting your parents and being greedy could result with you being eaten by a witch. The three little pigs told you that if you just skimmed and didn't do hard work, you'd be eaten by another big bad wolf. Being eaten was a common source of fear in a lot of children. We were taught morals as a child by being scared into compliance. This is the way fear was positively used to control and teach. In your life today, fear may not be yield such positive consequences. We walk through life searching to stay in the indistinct boundaries that society has granted us. As Rita Brown, best-selling author who specializes in murder mystery points out, the reward for conformity is being liked by everyone but ourselves. We've been taught to highly value the opinion of others. This includes appeasing those who are more powerful or we view as greater than us. Many are raised to be subservient to their elders, which creates a servile, silent personality in too many people. For those who want to say something, it is ingrained in their brains that ostracism is the consequence of holding an opposing opinion. Our tendency to surround ourselves with a community of peers creates a fear of being separated. So, we will compromise our morals to satisfy this inner need. The innate desire to speak out against what is wrong is ended because of our fear. It's an ugly thing, this mass murderer staring us in the eyes, but luckily there's a solution, an escape route to our fear. After weeks of manipulating us from behind the shadows and tormenting us, Pennywise has shown his ugly face. We have looked into the face of fear and laughed, or peed ourselves. Everyone has different reactions. <laughs> now we must escape. We will not run from the source of fear, but rather overcome it by finding courage. Courage is not the absence of fear, but the judgment that something is worth more than it, says James Hollingworth, a man who worked in spite of his fear by using a pseudonym. He published many works because he believed in his opinion. <laughs> to take control over fear, you must identify that something is worth more than it. Ask yourself, does having to confront someone about an issue scare more, scare you more than living with that burden of regret for the years after? Is it worth correcting the Starbucks barista when they get your drink wrong? Do you value the lives of others more than a moment of your own? It may scare you to stand up to those who are mistreating someone, but those few fearful seconds of your life could be worth a lifetime of, on the victim. By learning to prioritize, you can reduce your anxiety, leading to a healthier mindset where you can no longer rely on fear. Public speakers have learned to excel at these methods. They choose their message over the opinions of others and have a desire to aid the oppressed. Jennifer Donnelly, a highly acclaimed historical fiction author said, we who have a means and a voice must use them both for those who have neither. So when you're persuaded into conformity or following the path that you don't want to, prioritize your happiness. When you're told to change your style and interest, prioritize your individuality. When you're asked to play a game by a guy wearing a creepy white pig mask, prioritize your sanity. <laughs> Don't be a stupid horror movie character that gets killed in the first 10 minutes. Be a smart one that gets killed in the very final scene. Your efforts to override your fear may not always be fruitful, and sometimes the backlash will be too strong. But go ahead and scare them with your willpower. <laughs> Before you go into any deserted property or location, Check the background. If you need to, Google it. Then when you meet the masked murderer face to face, introduce yourself. And finally, after they have rejected your offer of friendship and a hug, politely ask to be excused, even though your amygdala is flashing red lights in everything you've ever learned wants you to run. Remain calm and tell yourself congratulations. You're still alive. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive, but not you, not anymore.